Hi, this is Pam, Pamela Gropey Art, and today we're going to paint pretty pink tulips in a teacup. So join me. This is super beginner friendly and anyone can do it. So don't be afraid to try. Change up the colors, make it your own. If you want to do the tulips a little bit differently, go ahead. I'm going to have a pattern for you to transfer onto your canvas if you wish, but don't be afraid to branch out and just paint ovals and then fill in with the stroke work. So let's get painting. We are going to start our painting now. This is a 14 by 14 inch wrap, gallery wrap canvas from Michaels. It's one of the um, economy packs. They work great for this and they're pretty inexpensive. So uh, don't have any fear of messing up. I gave it a couple coats of gesso as in my gessoing tutorial YouTube video and blog post. It just helps the paint not to absorb. And this back here is where I cleaned out a brush from my practice session, which doesn't hurt it at all. Just adds another layer behind there. And this is what I was practicing on yesterday. I was trying it on the boots. Now this isn't as big as I wanted it. That's why the boots don't show down here. I mean, this is just a practice piece. And I did the yellow boots, pink polka dots, and some tulips. Um, but instead, I decided I wanted to do a teacup with tulips in it instead, using similar colors. So the background I am starting with that I'm putting on is I started using, I put out a drift. Now, this is a color that was sent to me by Folk Art, Plaid Folk Art. I am a Plaid ambassador. They send me all the new colors when they put them out, et cetera, or anything um, that they think I might like. Uh, you can put any aqua color here, even mixing your own with a blue and a green. I am also using, I don't know, I don't want warm white. I don't want back warm tones, uh, wicker white. So I have a drift and wicker white. This one's just about empty, so I need to get out another one. Now, if I were to, um, when I can find it, I should say, I like to buy the large eight ounce container of white and other colors I use a lot of, mostly wicker white. You can also use titanium white in this. So let me get my wicker white. Wicker white comes in both the multi-surface and the regular. And here is a bottle that I need to get some out of. I didn't feel like taking the wrapper off, I just unscrewed it, which they say do not recommend unscrewing them because and um, pouring them out that way because you let air in. So here I am mixing the two colors together. I'm using my low Cornell three inch white nylon. I get these off of Amazon. I bought some similar at um, Michaels and they were not as firm. They were so soft that you really couldn't move paint with them like I like to do. So I want to keep my streaks going up and down, but if you wished you could do a combination and then you just have an interesting background where it just is all all over the place or you could use a sponge and um, smear it on that way. But we are going to go or simple for me today because it's not about the background this is just the beginning it's going it's all about the design I just wanted something that would complement the colors in this design so now there's the basics of the background remember this was plaid folk art adrift and wicker white blended together on the surface now I'm not going to bore you with showing you going around the edges, but I'm also going to go around the edges, so that's all neat and tidy. And there, we will let that dry before we go on to our next step. Now, if you wanted um, to have one side a little bit lighter than the other, where it kind of gradually goes across, add a little bit more drift here, a little bit more white here, and blend it in. I'm not con too concerned about it. Or maybe in the center, like I'll add just a touch more white. Excuse me, I dropped a bottle. This is my empty bottle. In the center to cast like a, 
a light glow where it draws the eye in. So right where the teacup and the flowers will be, be kind of lighter in the center. But that's totally optional. Just go with the flow and do as you please. As I said, the background in this is not imperative. Be loose and just have fun with it. This is the teacup and I've kind of started to do the placement of the tulips, but I thought I need to put the leaves in first. So let's start with our tulip leaves. Now I have a few greens here um, and I have my traditional sap green, which I'm going to use as a shading color and not as a main color because I want these leaves to be on the lighter side. So here's a clover. This is Plaid Folk Art Clover. I think this is the regular. Yes. And there went a big slide of snow off my roof. And then I'm going to go with fresh foliage instead of my typical citrus green. Um, I, this is just a little bit calmer while being a nice light green. So I'm using my three quarter inch flat brush. This is the Donna Dewberry One Stroke. I often use these. This set has I've been using since 2016 and um, anyways so it's still usable I have it taped up because I left it sitting in water and that causes the paint to start to peel my bad uh, note do not leave your brushes in water some floating medium now because this is a long stroke I do like to add a bit of floating medium but I don't mind going over the strokes too so just add a touch of floating medium and I'll dip brush my brush into it and then I'm going to double load my brush well with the two colors you can see how it's going there and as I said I wanted these leaves to be on the lighter side and if I need to add some of the darker color I shall so first of all this one now this is going to be an interesting one to do. Let's see if I can actually do this. First I'll start off on the chisel edge because it's narrow. See it's narrower than my brush at the base. So I'm going to bring this up and then this is going to widen out here. Now there's a method to my madness here. I want it to look like this is folded in and I'm not going about this well. I should practice that one first. Let's do this leaf over here. Now I'm going to load my brush, dip into the darker green so it gives it a lot of contrast on the outside. And I'm starting on the chisel. You see how it's narrow here. And then I press, keep pressing as I slide the brush. And then I let it come up to the chisel edge into a point. Now I'm going to go back reload, work in some of the sap green, and do the same. I'm going to start on the chisel edge, and I want the outside edge to be the dark green, and I'm just pulling up and then pull it into a point. The opacity is not that great for me. So I will let this dry and I will go over it. And the whole reason I go over it is just to get that depth of color. But you see how the outer sides are darker, the in is lighter, and um, that's the effect I'm going for on that leaf. Now over here, this one is turned. So I'm going to start on the chisel edge. I'm going to go up, 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 And then I'm going to let it come down like that. And you see how this is darker under here? Now there's several ways you can go about doing this. But I'm just going to go up and then let it slide down. This is not a turned, perfectly turned leaf where you want a lot of the shadowing. I'm just getting an effect here. I'm not ready to dive into that more difficult where it's folded over. This is just turned that direction. There's some really neat techniques 
to give the fold, but this is just bending. So let's try this again and I will show you, now I'll show you just a bent leaf. We'll try one that is um, flopping over. So I'm loading my brush with the clover and the fresh foliage. Uh-oh, did I get some on the wrong cut on the wrong one? The fresh foliage is kind of mixed into that. And then I'm going to dip the classic, no, um, what is that? Classic green? No, 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 clover into the sap green. And we are going to attempt to fold it. Okay. If you want to make this a folded, I can show you how to do that. We are going to start on the chisel edge and we are going to bring this up and over. You see that? Chisel edge, flatten up and over. Now it may do something here that I'm not going to like, but I wanted to show you this. So I'm reloading my two colors, the classic, and then the um, touch of sap. And then I'm going to see this side is the lighter green. Start back here and I'm going to slide and bring it down and go to a chisel edge. Do you see that? Slide down. And that creates the fold. I told you this would get um, covered over, but that's okay. It can act like it's another leaf back there, etc. I'm going to bring this to a point. It seems like I've got too much paint and it. It splays the, the bristles. So that's easily fixed. So there is the flipped over leaf. Now, if you just want to do the bended leaf, that's fine. No big deal. We'll leave that alone. That's just another leaf back there. Now this, if you don't like this little edge here, just work it in to the side. That all works. And you can go over it later if you want to redo it, meaning you didn't like how it turned out, then just do so. See, so it started with the dark on the bottom. Come up and go over. Reload. I'm going to work my, I'm going to clean my brush out because I'm not holding the chisel. Sometimes that's from too much paint being loaded in there or globbed up after you've done a several strokes. And I'm reloading with the light, the f fresh foliage and the clover. And then I'm tapping into the sap green and light side over here and just bring it, slide it down, flat, flat, turn your brush with your thumb and bring it to a chisel point. And that shows, has the shadow underneath. Do you get that? The shading, like right here where it's flipping over. That's not turning out the way I wanted it to for you. Sorry. Practice makes perfect. And we are going to have like a tulip here, or it could be behind or in front, and more tulips. The leaves are not the star of the show. They're just second fiddle, so to speak. So let me show you on maybe a piece of paper or another. So I'm not totally confusing you. Let me see. Well, here's something that's kind of messed up, but you can get the, the gist. And I'm running out of paint here. I can do it with another brush too. Let's do it with a number 12, or if you have a number 16, let me see if I can do it with this. Is this the number 16? No, it's another 12. Number 16 is in, the, in between like a three quarter and the, um, and I'm not finding my number 16, so no big deal. We'll just do it with the 12. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. You need to put out more paint. I try to make this easy. If you just want to do the folded leaf, go ahead. I was just showing you an option. And like I said, the leaves are playing second fiddle to um, the tulips. So it's not a big deal. I'm just showing you what you can do.
if you so desire. Okay, number 12 flat, loading it with the two greens, lighter green, darker green. And there's not a lot of contrast between these two colors. That's why I go ahead and dip into the sap green and work it in. The clover just tones down the sap. And I'm going to start on the chisel edge. And we're going to go up, up, flatten your brush. And that's the wrong color. Is that the wrong color? No, that's wrong. Wrong direction. One more time. So load the brush. Dip in the sap green, and we are going to start on the chisel edge, go up, go up, go up, and go over a touch. Did you catch that up and over? The dark green's not dark enough for me. I'm going to do that again. I didn't load the other, I just loaded the dark green. So I need to work the paint into my brush, and then we're going to do it again and we're going to start right here. We're going to come across and then down. You see that? See the dark underneath here produces a bit of shading, therefore it looks like it's under the fold of the leaf. So we'll do that again. I didn't load. I just loaded more dark green. And you see that? You see how you've got the The dark against the light and it shows the fold. Now you can do it the other way too. I mean you just keep practicing. You know it's been a while since I've done these so if they're not turning out exactly just go up, 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 over, over. Make sure I've got plenty of paint and it's on the where I need it so it comes off the bristles and then just come right here there that one turned out better I was coming back too far on these but you see how that is the dark is on the underneath and then the light overlaps it and that creates the shadow underneath there to give you the effect of the leaf bending so I'm not a pro, I'm just showing you what you can do. Practice makes perfect, and a lot of times you'll come up with your own method that works even better for you. So that being said, let's get back to our other leaves. So this one needs another coat for opacity. Yes, it may be under some tulips, but that's okay. I want to make sure this has got what I want. So I'm just going to go over it, double loaded my brush, and I'm just bringing up. And since there's still um, paint in my brush on the other side, I'm just flipping and bringing that up. If you want to make it longer and have the tip higher, go right ahead. There's no rhyme or reason. Just put your leaves in there. This one, I decided that what I was showing you was going to be too difficult. I don't want to make this difficult. I want this to be super easy for you. So I'm just going to go over it and make that a plain leaf again with the um, dark green on the outside and just bring it up. Touch of the sap with the clover and we'll just do the same. Too much light, I'm going to load a little bit darker further over on the edge and bring that up. Sometimes I start fiddling. That is all good. So let's just go with that. Okay, there's that leaf. And here's our flippy leaf. And we'll just go ahead and fix that with this brush. And we'll go up, 
and over. And then, oops, we'll start here and bring it down. My paint's getting dry in my brush. So floating medium would help there. Okay, we're gonna done, we're done messing with that. We have one over here. This can be a thinner leaf, meaning you can just, on the chisel edge, pull, pull, press so it widens and lift. Press so it widens and lift. Now there should be a leaf up behind one of these tulips here. So just to give it some nice background foliage. Some of the leaves can be a little bit lighter, some can be thinner, thicker. You choose your leaf structure. I need my picture of my tulips. I have a picture, ah, okay, some of them are shorter, of a bouquet of tulips. All right, so let's do another leaf and we will make this one shorter. You don't want everything the same exact size and shape. So there we go. This one's gonna be behind some tulips, so it's just background. So I'm not gonna worry about the opacity of it. Okay, we've got our leaves in there. Again, looking at my picture. Okay, I can add more foliage as I see fit later. So let's take a break, let this dry and I can come in and do some of the cups. So I'm gonna pick out my colors for the cup, maybe some of the, the table down here, and then we'll go from there. So let's start on our teacup. While we're waiting for our leaves to um, dry, get my three quarter inch brush. You could even use a larger brush for this because it's a pretty big design. I thought I, I'm not sure what I want to put down here yet, so I'm not going to worry about that. So I have, this is pale yellow and some yellow ochre on my palette. Now I'm, it's all good. So let's just fill in. Now remember yellow is not opaque, so this may take a couple coats. And that's okay because we've got time got time. Now I'm just going to follow the outline of my cup. Now there's no rhyme or reason or strokes for this. I am just filling in. Filling in here and there. And you can even do this with an old worn brush. Lay the paint in here. I try to get close to the lines. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you go over the line, no big deal. So this is all good. Just dab it all in there. Now I'm pulling up paint now, so I need to stop and let that start to dry. And Sorry about that. My battery timed out on me and had to go change it. So I was filling in with the yellow and I noticed it was starting to pull up a little bit. It's dried a little more in the time that it took to change my battery. And what I was gonna do is change up to the 12 so I can get into these areas a little bit easier. Now to do that, I'm gonna load with my yellow. Let me see, the pale yellow. Then I'm gonna drag just the edge through the yellow ochre. And that helps me to create this dividing line. It's a little thicker than I want, but I can go back over it with the pale yellow. And I'll have the shading there of the yellow ochre. Hopefully my hair is not getting in the way. A little dry on the pale yellow. And I'll do the same for down here. This is a smaller area. It's even too smaller than the number 12, so I turn my brush at an angle so I can get into the smaller 
area. And you know, there's an angle on here, so it came down at an angle, and then this lower portion. So let me get some more. Now don't worry about being perfect. This is just a fun piece. I got a little bit over the edge. You know, I can go over that with some other like little pieces of moss. I can go over it if I needed to with um, the background color, or I could just pull it up with a clean paintbrush. And I'll show you how I do that. Let me rinse out my brush so I can demo that for you. Now it's a damp brush, but clean, and I just pull up that paint. And pull up that paint. And that's how easy it is to clean up those little faux pas. Over here I need a little more yellow. So we've got that based. We're gonna go over that a couple of times. So we're gonna do the handle now, same method. Right here against the cup, I want it to have a little bit of the darker yellow. And I'm just gonna follow the outline. Follow the outline with my brush on the chisel edge if I want, flatten it where I want, and then bring it down. And right here where it comes down, I'm gonna bring in that yellow ochre. And I'm just filling in now, so don't worry about it being too even, too uh, opaque, because we're gonna have to go over this a few times. You just wanna get the general shape in there. And that's good. We're gonna let this dry, because you see where I dab on areas with the paintbrush, I start pulling it up, and I don't care to do that, so. Let's let it dry. I have to recharge my microphone batteries now. I will come back later to finish up. My leaves are drying well. We can start working on our tulips next. So we're gonna transfer the pattern on. Normally I would just sketch in and then do my stroke work, but I'm gonna show you, since I'm gonna give you a pattern or I'm, I'm gonna have a pattern available for you that I transfer it because pinks are not dark or are not opaque a lot of times it's hard to go over dark graphite lines so it's good to use a light or a white one though sometimes it's hard to see on the surface but I'm just gonna go ahead and transfer the lines this tulip is bending over and it kind of goes over the edge of the canvas, which is okay. And I'm just outlining it. It will be very faint. I'm not gonna do the stem because I wanna be able to pull that in with a natural arc and I can't see it right now. So these, this piece back here is way back. So I'm just gonna kind of go over it. Now I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna see if it transferred enough for me to see it and I need to do it a little bit more, just a little bit more. And then I will go over it with a watercolor pencil and that will help me. And you know, that's the only thing about, you know, having to trace it on is it can be a little tricky. Now the graphite, the, I could use a darker graphite, but it's harder. I can sometimes get them too dark. Okay. Uh-oh, my... Uh, wasn't all the way dry and I got it stuck in there. That's okay. We're gonna go over that anyways. Just make sure I don't stick my paper together by folding it up with paint, wet paint on it. Okay, I'm gonna toss that over there. And I'm gonna take, I'm gonna use pink. This is a watercolor pencil and I'm just gonna draw in those shapes. It doesn't ha not have to be perfect. We're just getting a little bit of direction on. If you don't see it well, you can Rever refer to your pattern. Now the beauty of watercolor pencil is it just washes away. I'm not washes away, but just melts with water. So there we have our 
tulip that is leaning over and then we'll just pull a stem in later. So we have that one placement. So what else, um, other ones? So I have like four different shapes. Here's one that's just very pointed and not open. And that one can go up here. Now you see how this is gonna almost overlap or it can overlap. I might make it a little bit fatter so it overlaps this. Um, and I do the same trick. Though you could just draw oval and then do stroke work, but because I know many people like to start by using patterns, this may be easier for you. Hopefully my hair hasn't been making a bunch of racket on the microphone. Sorry, I should have put it up. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and... Oops, that's the watercolor pencil. A sharp pen actually transfers it with white transfer paper easier because the sharp point really presses in. So let's see if we got it on there. Must be in a part of the paper that isn't have a lot. As they wear, um, it gets lighter and lighter. And since this is not a super dark surface, then that's why it's not showing up as readily. Okay, there we have it. I just wanted to display that for you, like I said. So work with it, learn to use the graphite paper um, if you wanna transfer patterns. And then so that I don't lose, or even in poor light, I can see this. I'm going to go ahead and draw this on. And then we'll do that. I don't, like I said, I don't draw the stem because filling it in with a paintbrush is so hard and you, you tend to get them too fat. So I'll just leave to drawing the stems on with the brush and paint. Okay, that being said, I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna do the others and then we'll come back and we'll see what step next we need to do. Now we are going to go ahead and do another coat of yellow on the teacup. So I, I'm going back in with the pale yellow and I'm gonna add a little bit of um, yellow ochre to create some shadow areas and um, we'll go from there. I may add a little bit of white for some highlight areas, but I'm just gonna lay in another coat. I may need a third but we're gonna just put this on as thick as we can. I'm gonna use my three quarter inch flat. And the reason is, you know, I've told you this before, if you've done any of my lessons that include yellow, many yellows are not opaque. So if you have a dark under color like this to get the good coverage and the brightness, um, you're gonna have to layer the yellows on. Now yellow ochre is usually a little bit more opaque. So it can create some depth of color. Don't be too precious with it. Just pull it in there. Pull the colors in there. You just want coverage. We've got a little shading on this one side. You notice I already have some yellow ochre there on the handle, right up against this. You can go over it because you'll be still be able to see through it. And you can already tell you're starting to get some opacity there in the yellows. Now I'm gonna change up my brush because I need a smaller brush to do this down here. And I'm gonna go in with my number 12. You can also use a number 10 flat. And we're gonna get this stampened. And yellow ochre here is gonna create the shading that I want. So I'm just gonna go over it with the pale yellow at the moment. Pale yellow will do what we need it to do as far as getting some more coverage in there. And the yellow ochre will still shine through 
and then we can go in and restate the yellow ochre. I'm just going to put it on the corner of my brush. You notice how I'm walking the corner of the brush into it. And then I'm just going to come right along here to add back that touch of shading. And I'll do it in the lower area as well. And I'll just kind of go around the bottom slightly. I'm going to go into the handle, and I'm using the chisel edge because this is too wide of a brush. And I just had a touch of yellow or water. It must have been in the ferrule of my brush. Get on there. I'm just going to dab it up. I should have my paper towels here, and I don't. So I'm just going to add. Got cut off because my battery died. All right. So we're going to go back in here. Now this is where a smaller brush would come in handy, but I'm just going to go ahead and follow the outline, deepen the color, go in with my little bit of yellow ochre in areas for some shading. And I can go in with a touch of white. And I dried out my brush good that time. I rinsed it. I didn't rinse it fully. There's, you still see a little bit of yellow in there. I just got the majority of it out. And we'll just bring in some white. Maybe that'll help with the coverage. And then I can go back over this with pale yellow and not have to do so many coats. But remember, this isn't the star of the show. This is just an added detail. It'll just kind of fade into the background as... The other design takes full, full measure. You can see I kind of went over there, over that area, and I don't want that there. So I dampened this as a filbert brush, but you can use any brush. Just dampened it and picked up the paint. All righty, we're going to let this dry. I might want to before I do that. I'm going to go ahead and put some white in there because I'm not getting the coverage I want. And the white will help. And then I'll just do the white over it. So there we go. Now this is drying. We're going to go in and we're going to start on our tulip flowers. Now you can use a filbert or a flat, either one. Now we're going to undercoat the tulip flowers themselves. I do this because I want the paint to be very bright. And the under, darker undercolors will dull them, as well as going pinks and uh, reds are similar to yellows. They, they're not always very opaque. So you need to put down an undercoat to over, go over the darker color of the leaves. Now I'm going to do this. I can do this in a three-quarter inch flat. You can do whatever, use whatever size that fits for your design or the style of how you paint. And I mean that sometimes um, a smaller brush gives you better control if that's what you're looking for. So I am going to just basically follow the shapes of my tulips. And I'm just gonna fill them in and then They'll have the white background that I am looking for. Now I'm doing it rather like stroke work. You can just fill them in with regular strokes. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to go ahead and fill this one in. And then this one. Just follow the curves of your flowers. Now if I just blocked filled them in, I would lose my lines. Now that's okay to me, but others would like to follow the lines when they put in their other strokes. So right like this, I'm just going to cover everything. I've gotten most of the paint out of this brush and I will go to the number 12. 
And then after I start with the number 12, I'm probably going to speed this portion up because it's all the same. It's just filling in with white paint. Now one way, if you're doing this and you want to preserve your outlines, you can go ahead and go in with one of your colors, your pink colors, and I've got white in my brush. I'm going to drag the side load and I'm just going to go over where those lines are to preserve them. And then I won't lose my outline if I care to stay within it. Sometimes I just go in and paint them the way I want to, but I know a lot of people, um, it helps them when they're first beginning to have an outline, a pattern to follow, and it gives them a feeling of success because it actually turns out rather than trying to do their own and it doesn't work and then they get discouraged. I'm speaking from experience because when I first started painting, having an outline really helped me to feel successful because um, I had something to follow and it just worked. So I know it was easier. I'm now taking a drawing class, well not a class, I'm learning to draw and it's really great. Um, it's really helping me a lot with my painting. So if you can get a drawing book, I will link to one that I'm using that I'm finding very, very easy to follow. And he basically teaches children and um, it's really wonderful because if you haven't got a clue how to draw, which I do not, then it can be very, very helpful. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this base part in the pink. It'll give it some shading there. Some more white on my palette. And go from there. Okay, do we have all of them? We do. We have all of them. Alrighty, now you see these ones are kind of not opaque. So are transparent, more transparent than I wish, so I'm gonna bring some more white in and put a little bit more on them. I think it's dry enough right there. It's dry because it was so thin that I can pull that another bit of color over it. Alrighty. Now, as I said before, before I put the pattern on, many times I will draw oval shapes and just the shapes and then I'll uh, come in and do the final coat rather than drawing an actual pattern. And once you get comfortable with painting, um, you can be able to do that too. You'll have the confidence to just come in and paint shapes and then fill them in and go with the flow. It's just a matter of getting acquainted with the paints, how they work. Like me knowing that the pinks and reds in these colors are in these paints are not that opaque. Therefore, I know how to manipulate to get the effect I want by either underpainting or using a, a mix with them. All right, we're gonna let this dry 
and come back and do some more on the base here. So we're letting the background of the tulips dry while I'm going to go into the teacup a little again. So I added another color or a couple of colors. Actually, I was testing out uh, lemon custard and daffodil yellow. I'm thinking I'm going to go with the, the daffodil. They're very, very close. You can see they're very, very close in um, color. So it doesn't matter which one. I'll actually pick up both, but just know that you don't have to have both. And I wanted some brightness brought in because it seemed like the pale yellow just wasn't cutting it over the uh, teal. I should have maybe undercoated the entire cup with white. And I'm going to dab some into the yellow ochre. Bring some color right there at the rim, some depth of shading. And then I can come back again with my pale yellow. I want to wipe out some of the yellow ochre. I don't want too much of that over on this side. I want it to be lighter and brighter on this side. If a little bit gets in there. It's not a, a huge deal. But for the most part, I wanted that to be lighter on that side. Just dab it in there. No need to be perfect. There, we've got that now. It's looking much more opaque, which is what I'm aiming for. So I'm going to go into that, into the handle. I'm going to add me some more white on my palette. I have a number 10 this time. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go in with the Daffodil, lemon custard yellow. I got a little too much on my brush. I was getting impatient. Don't do that. Do as I say, not as I do. So I'm bringing that in, just following the curve of the handle and just bringing that pretty yellow in there. And I will side load a bit with the yellow ochre. Bring that around there. Bring a little bit more along the edge here. And along this outer edge here. Just work it in there. I'm also going to go along the bottom section. Oh, the lemon custard is closest to hand, so I'll go ahead and use the lemon custard. So here we're going to just add it to this base. Now note that it has an angle. Make sure you keep that angle. And then this one is more squared off on the edges. And that white underneath really makes that yellow pop. And I'm going to add that little bit of shading right there. Just keeping that right there. And we're all good. A little bit more yellow to cover right there. All right. This is coming together so the cup can sit and dry. So we're going to come in with our colors. We're going to do our petu not petunias, tulips. Looks like I will need maybe a new palette paper. And um, that way I can make sure I don't get into any colors I'm not wanting to. I'll just set this aside because I will use it again later and put out another paper. This is um, Richeson Gray Matter palette, paper palette, which I really like. I have an enamel palette, it's an tr enamel tray, but it's too big to sit behind here. Uh, beside here and be in the camera and the white just puts too much glare um, but I like using that too when I'm working on a large painting because it has a lot of surface for mixing paint but these work good because as you see I can put on my my um, clipboard and um, when I'm all done and I've used up my paint I can just toss them 
in the garbage and they are environmentally friendly as opposed to styrofoam plates which they are not really environmentally friendly. I had some viewers on YouTube call me to account on that. So, and it's all good because they are correct. So let's see. I am going to start with my number 12 on these tulips and I'm going to start in the back. Now the colors I'm going to use um, are magenta and bright baby pink and baby pink. The baby pink and bright baby pink are pretty close but there's just a little bit of a difference enough for me that it can create a little more depth in areas. See, it's barely discernible, but it's there. Just some interest. You can just add a little magenta into the baby pink if you don't want to. Have the two colors. I'm just using up what I have. You can even make these any color of tulips that you like. Lavender or um, purple, orange, green. Well, not green, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, and I don't paint them yellow because the cup's yellow. If I painted the cup pink, then I could paint them yellow. So first I'm going to start with some magenta on my brush and some of the bright baby pink. And I'm so right here, this top one, and if you want to refer back to your drawing, you can. Like here's my drawing, shows the tip there. You don't have to be exact, but I wanted that to be a little bit darker back there. And then right here in the center, where it kind of goes up, it has a little belly there. Just get that dark in there. It doesn't have to be all magenta. You see I have a little bit of the baby pink too, and it's blending a bit. That's exactly as I wished. Add a little bit more magenta. Don't be too precious with it because you're going to come and paint some strokes down there on that. So that is how I refer back if I need to. You could also, since this is clear, you could, since it was dry, lay it over it and go over it again with a light graphite paper. And um, then you can still have your lines. So all these little tricks. But again, magenta on my brush. And this one had two layers in the background. So I'm going to do a very dark and then one that's maybe a little bit lighter. And you see how it creates the layers. Like there's two, there's a petal in the back and the petal in the front. This I can just fill in. Just fill in. No need to be perfect. We're just getting that color in there. Same with this one. You've got the background petals. And you could switch it up where the dark is on the, um, the lighter pink is towards the outer edge. You just want it to be a little bit darker than what's here, just so it kind of goes backwards for you. And there's no absolute rule with that. You could totally break that rule if you wished. And it's getting a little dry, so I'm going to reload. Notice I have some streaks of magenta in that. It's all good. And I can change out, like go for another color pink if I want to add some white or a little different hue. It's up to you. I'm just going to stick with these colors to make it easy. And fun.
be loose. Chain them up. Flowers are never perfect. In fact, some can have lose their petals. And could be all wonky. But it all comes together in the end. Do the lighter pink on the outside of this one. I'm just getting color in here. I'll start some stroke work next. The next layer. And you'll see how it all comes together. And looks wonderful. This one down here needs its under color. Do we have them basically taken care of? All right, we're going to let that dry and we'll come back and we'll start doing some stroke work for the petals. I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix this one. This one looked too matchy matchy with the others and I wanted a little bit different shape. So I came in and I whited out part of it. And I want this one to have a big petal in front and one big petal in the back. And so I'm going to go between the petals and I'm just going to create this back one. And have it come down that way. I may want that a little darker, so I'm going to wipe out my brush and just pick up the magenta. Okay, so there's little pieces back here that um, is, is kind of noticeable as far as being in the, in the place where I don't want it to be. And I'm looking for my background color and I'm not finding it. So what did I do with it? Sorry, it was right here under my nose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little, what's called negative painting. There's some white up there in an area that I do not wish it to be. So I am going to bring in the background color. Now this is the sea mist. I'm pretty sure that's what I used. I could be totally wrong. I got a little drop of paint on my ferrule. And I'm just going to go over the area, touch it up, and then we'll be good to go. Just a little bit deeper. I want this to be a little bit deeper in that crevice. Still, that magenta is still wet a bit. So, okay, I think I've got it touched up enough that we're a okay. So now let's start our stroke work. I think that still needs to dry more. And I'm looking at my reference tulips. And this one right here is this one. I noticed I didn't have or somehow obliterated the one that was supposed to be like this. And that just gives variety. See, there's just four different shapes there. And so that was what the one I fixed. So let's start this direction. No, let's work this way because I'm right-handed. So if I needed to place my hand on here, I wouldn't get my hand in wet paint. So we'll start with this one. Turn your, your piece if you need to. I'm gonna see if I feel more comfortable. I think I did the other ones with a three quarter inch brush, but I'm gonna try this one with the um, 12, number 12 flat brush. So I'm gonna load it, the two pinks, 
get a nice amount of paint on there. You want this to flow well and make a nice, beautiful stroke. So, as I said, turn your piece if you need to. And then you can create your stroke. Now I'm going to start, I want more magenta. And I'm going to start right here. See where I'm starting? Make sure my hand's not in your way. Starting on the chisel edge, I'm going to pull, flatten my brush as I follow up the edge. It got a little dry. I may need to get some floating medium, but you can go right over it. Come back if you need to. Then I'll start right here, chisel edge. Let me see if I can do this. Let me see if I can do this to the side and see if I'm not in your way. Chisel edge. And bring it back down over that centerpiece. As I said, I may need to get some floating medium. And just go over it. I may want this center part a bit darker or a lot brighter because I'm not getting the contrast, but that's okay. You, you work through it and you decide what you want. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that brighter or lighter. And then I'll get the contrast with that magenta much better. And I can go over that. I'm not worried about that um, getting paint on it. So, there's that side. Now I'm going to do this side. Same way. I'm just going to load the brush. If I want to make the pink a little lighter, I'll add a touch of white. And I will... This one's a little more rounded. It's not quite as... as pointy. And I'm just... Am I in the way? I am in the way. Let me see if I can do it better this way. Try not to get my hand in your way. And I'm going up and up. More magenta. The other pink was very wet, so that's why it's blending in. And that's all right. We can come back and restate more magenta if we want it to be darker. And just fill it in. There we go. I'm getting that color on there now. Go up, then bring it back down and fill in. Fill in. Leave it be for a while. You can come back and redo it if you wish, or you can end up liking it. So we will move on to the next, the next flower right here. And I'm going to load my brush. I could try it with the three quarter inch and see if that gives me better coverage. I don't know. I'm afraid it would be just a little too unwieldy for me. So. First, we're going to do the sides. And I don't have to do the center because that center one's going to come up over that. So first I'm going to go up and up and bring it down. Get in the dry edge. We can start up there and bring it down. Do the same on the other side. I can do it this way. Go up along the outer edge. Go up and bring it down. Fill in. I just reloaded with a little bit more of the magenta. Hopefully I didn't have my hand in the way. I probably did dug on it. But anyways, I just followed the outside edge. And now we're going to do the center 
piece, which I'm just going to go up. The magenta is not stark enough. I might need to wait till that side one's, yeah. I think I'm going to have to wait till the side one's dry to get the definition. A little more definition. So that the, um, the edges stand out. So I'll come back and I'll do the magenta along the edges even better a bit later. And we'll fix her up. But it's looking good. It's looking good. I can see where it's going to be much different than these others. And uh, it's all going to work out in the long run. So let's get going on this one. Same deal. You know, I am going to try my three quarter inch brush. I may regret it, but sometimes you need um, a larger brush to get the coverage. And we'll see how this works. I think I need more magenta on my palette. Also, um, I should bring in a touch of berry wine to add to the brush to give it a, just a hint more color. So that's what I'm going to do to really deepen some areas. So here's some berry wine. And it's an old bottle, so it's being stubborn. And let's see if I could do maybe if I could do this upside down for you, then I wouldn't get my hand in the way. Maybe oh, I think that's pretty fine. All right, magenta and the pink loaded in our brush. Load, load, load in our brush. And I'm gonna get hint of that berry wine on the magenta side just to give it a little more oomph. And let's see how we do this. I'm going to start here. Yep, this brush might be just too big. And we're going to go up and bring it down. And do the same on the other side. Hint of the color there. And we're going to go up and bring it down. The brush is probably a little bit too big for great control on these. A good size brush for me would be a 16, I do believe. I think the 12 is just a little too small. And um, the 3 quarter inch is just a little too big. If you don't have a number 16, that's fine. The um, You can use the 12. I'll continue with the 12. I can't find my 16 right now. So, and I practiced and I can't remember, but we had a, a week long of power outages. I couldn't get back to this painting tutorial and so I kind of lose my flow. So let's get started with this one. We'll go back to our number 12 flat and we will I think I'm going to do the lighter pink on the outside, magenta and the baby, the bright baby pink or the baby pink, either one. Touch of the berry wine. And this time we're going to go with the light pink on the outside edge. And let's just bring it up, bring it on up there to a point, and we're going to come back down. Baby pink got obliterated. It's one thing about acrylics. You can go back over them. We'll let this dry. We'll go back over it. Or once it dries, sometimes you'll like what it looks like, even when you don't, when you first put it on there. So I'm going to go up this way. I'm going to get a little bit of white. Give it that. And at times you think you're making a complete mess. But when you know how to go back and fix those messes, see adding the white gave me the definition I was looking for. So 
So you just keep painting. Don't give up, just keep painting. I have plenty of failures, but I don't call them failures in my painting history. I call them learning opportunities. I learned from each and every one. And that's just how it works when you're learning a new skill or even, you know, branching out into different variations of how to paint. I'm learning different methods uh, and different mediums and they're all fun and you can actually cross um, your learning experiences over the different mediums. So we're going to go ahead and do this one. This one I can finish up a little bit later or touch up if I like. But for now, we're going to go with what it looks like. So again, I'm going to go with the dark on the outside. And just bring it up. And bring it down. Touch a little bit of berry wine if you want to give some more definition. And going up and bringing it down. Got dry there, so I'll just go in and... I'm turning the corner to the lighter side so I don't get too much magenta in the center. Touch into some of the berry wine. That's good. We're getting a little smoother, a little faster. Now we've got one last one. And I think I'll do the light on the outside on this one. Whoops. And we'll just float it up, come to a peak, and bring it down. And this one kind of goes around this, goes up and down, maybe up to a peak. We're good. We're going to let them dry. This one is good enough to go over again. Now if you need to, you don't always have to rinse your brush out. Sometimes you can just wipe it out. Pinch it out with a cloth and um, get going again. Just reload and go over one that you don't like. I'm not liking that one. That's the one I did with the three quarter inch brush and it's just too, I don't know, just too. So let's go this way. We'll start here, bring this up, bring it down. Turn the brush over, do it again. Much better. Much, much better. And go up. Got a dry edge there, pull it. Chisel edge, pull it. I'm keeping my eye on my painting and not on my camera screen, so if I'm in, I am totally in the way, aren't I? So I'm going to go along the edge here with the chisel edge, and that's what I'm doing. Just follow along it with the chisel edge. This one overlaps this one, so I'm not going to pull it all the way down, but I am going to just work that in there with the brush. And then this one will be done again. Just pull it up. And if you don't have to come back down, you can just come to back to the bottom and bring it up. And then blend in. I'm pinching out again. I'm only going to get one color because I don't want the magenta berry wine to be too blended because it was getting too blended right there. Okay, we are good. Just a touch right here. I'm 
looking. Step back, look, and sometimes if you're getting frustrated, stop. Stop, walk away, and come back. And many times you will find that it's not as bad as you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, this is looking horrible. I don't like this, etc. And sometimes when you step away and come back, you can see what needs tweaking and what can be left alone. Okay, so I'm going to take a break. And then I'm going to start on the stems. We're going to do the stems and then we can revisit the tulips and see if there's anything we want to do with them differently. So let's start our stems. I've got our greens out, fresh foliage. This is clover. And I'm going to use the number 10 flat, uh, but you could use the number 12. Normally I would use a 12, but I'm going to do it with the smaller one because I know many others would find it easier. So I'm just going to do a little green line here that I can pull from. And so I have my brush. Let's see if I can do this without getting my hand in your way. I have my brush up and down. And I'm going to just pull a V and just fill it in basically like that with the strokes, just little strokes, and then pull, pressing on the chisel edge and bringing it down. You can reload if it gets too dry and re-pull. And since there's wet underneath, it will just pull on down. And do again. Do the same here. I'm just going to do my little wedge and pull, 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 and pull down. Pull it down. Didn't have to pull so far. I go over the lip a little bit. Don't worry about that. The lip of the cup. We will take care of all that kind of stuff later. And same here, I'm going to do my little wedge and pull down. You might want to try something a little darker just because on that light part of that leaf you're not going to see it as well. And there we have that. Do the little wedge right here. Do the triangle, fill it in with little chisel strokes, and just pull. If you want to make it a little wider, you can. Or not. I'm not sure I like that wider. And here are the same wedge. Put this wedge triangle. I'm kind of at an odd angle here, so. And pull down. Pull down. If you're not getting variation like you like, I can see the variation. Go in, add the dark, and just pull it in. And then the last one right there. And that one's kind of over top of the green, so you're gonna not get much definition, but that's okay. The stems do blend in with the leaves. My little wedge. And so we're all good. We have our stems on there. Now if you wanted to, you could add some little strokes just to add some little more things in there. Just little lines and we can put some filler flowers in we can do just pull some things over top blend those other leaves to the background send them to the back the back of the bus The 
this is your painting. It doesn't have to have rhyme or reason. Just what you want out there. All right. We're all doing good. So now we can do some fluffy little filler. What keeps it nice and not busy would be some like white, white with maybe some touches of pink filler flowers. And so how I would do that is I would get a scruffy brush and or a sponge. I'm gonna do it with a scruffy and I'm gonna get some lots of floating medium and I'm dipping in some white. Now the white had a little bit of color in it, even a touch of yellow, and that's good. But I want this to be rather faint. So we're gonna just put in, some, bounce in some little fluffies here and there. Even bring it down lower. You know, the green is still a little bit wet, so be careful about getting in that. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. You can bring some down along the rim of the cup if you want. You can even add a little touch of green. You don't want it too frothy, so don't get too carried away down here at the rim of the cup. And you can even bring in some green up here just to fill in background. I'm liking the two greens on there. Okay, I'm going to dry out my brush a little bit. The scruffy. Don't get it wet because then it just creates mud. I'm going to go back into the white and then just Bring in some of that down in here. Okay. You can leave that to dry. If any of it's too dark, just go over it with the white. And it just kind of blends it to the back. And remember, Acrylics always dry darker than when they are wet. So on this one, I can see that that needs a little bit more definition on the side. So I'm going to go ahead with some pink and the magenta, mostly a touch of magenta, because it's got a lot of dark in all of it. So I don't want the pink to override too much. Okay, perfect. Got a little more definition on that petal. And then this one, that one needed a little more help there. I see I have a dry edge on that one. Like I said, I told you we were gonna come in and touch up. I'm, I'm right in the way, aren't I? Let me see. I can't do lefty, so just pulling along that edge. Okay. We are looking good. This one, hmm, we can maybe touch it up, go over it and see how I like it. If I like it better. Almost gotten the wrong color, wrong side, wrong color. I'll reload that. Okay, we wanted a light pink on that side. Okay, we did good. Oh, my brush is getting dry again.
better quit fussing or I'm going to make a mess. Okay, let's go back to our cup, our teacup. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go over it with the pale yellow, which is what I originally wanted. It just wasn't standing out like I wanted. And I think the darker yellows underneath are now perfect. And we're just going to put on the finishing touches of the lighter yellow. So I'm getting into the pale yellow. I'm just going to pull it in around different areas. I'm going to let the darker yellow show. In fact, I'll bring them back in here and there. I'm just going to go over. That. I'm going to bring in a touch of the darker yellow along this side. There we go, getting it to blend. And then a little bit of the lighter yellow on this side with a touch of the custard right in there. Perfect. I need some white to give it some a bright spot. I'm out of white on my palette. Plus it just it might have a touch of green, but we're going good. good. It's all good. So add a little spark of light on that side. Okay, I'm going to switch to the smaller brush, 10, and I'm going to do the lighter yellow down here. And then on the handle, just don't even bother covering all the darker yellow. Just bring that handle around. Remember, we're not creating realism. This is an impression of something. Very loose, very light. And if you wanted to put some tendrils into that, you could. You could actually bring in some pink into those little areas. I got another dry, scruffy. Having numerous scruffies is quite handy. I didn't add any of these um, floating medium. Just going to put some hint of pink in here. Just a hint. You don't want it too much. You just you want this brush, brush to be quite dry. So I'm tapping out a lot. But it kind of brings in some color. Now down here at the base, I want it a little bit darker right along the edge of the cup. So I'm going to go into some of the thicket and I'm just going to fill in. Just, you can even make leaf shapes if you want. But that gives it a little depth down there. A little depth. I am going to make leaf shapes because I feel like it. And there we have our tulips in a teacup. You can decorate your teacup. You could put a little rose in the center. You could put tiny roses all over it if you wanted. Um, you can bring some shading, shadowing, down beneath your cup even. So to do that, I would probably go with an asphaltum or a burnt umber. And just give it the feel of like there's a table down there or something. And if you want to get it, make it a little lighter, go right ahead and just add some 
a hint of a top of a tabletop. Just keep it real simple. Because our tulips are the star of the show. Now you can step back and look at it and decide later if there's more things you want to add. If you want to add little transparent leaves, if you want to add um, some shadow flowers, or if you want to shade or shadow around your tulips. Those are all possibilities. So I'm going to leave it as it is, leave it up to you to do other things with it. And, or you could do uh, another thing would be a tulip laying down here at the base. But for now, we're going to leave it be. I'm going to keep it as simple as possible. I get going and get a little crazy and uh, add too much for you. But so don't forget to paint, uh, paint, sign your painting many times on the acrylics like this. Um, the darker ones, a, a nice silver Sharpie or gold Sharpie is really quite pretty for your signature. It I know I said I was done, but I started playing with it again and I was shadowing a little bit just to see the effect I could get. And what I used was lavender. I used lavender as a really good shadow color it, rather than a brown. And so I loaded my brush with floating medium and I put the little corner into the lavender and I worked it through where it is darker on the corner and it just kind of fades across the brush and you just work it and then you just shadow in the areas that you want to create that little depth and just try to keep in mind um, your light source. So I didn't really talk about that in this but I'm just going to create some shadows beneath my tulips. Some little areas. Give them a little depth. Give them a little depth even across the leaves. On the leaves you could actually do too um, a dark green instead of the lavender. Like I said this is totally optional. You do not need to add this, but sometimes it adds just a little dimension. And like here, I'll show you, I'm starting on the chisel edge and I'm, then I'm flattening my brush so it kind of disappears up behind the flower. That one's a little dark, so I need to fade it out a little bit. Be careful because sometimes the color starts to walk onto your brush, so you'll get much too wide of a swath. Now see how this one's bending down, that's why I'm going along this edge because we're pretending the lights coming from that direction pretty much. Even though we had the darker shadow on the cup over here, it was just to give it dimension. I, I didn't have basically the sun coming or the light coming that direction. And I think that's all good. We can shadow underneath the cup a little bit with the lavender right over the Tabletop, or the little brown down here. I went up and around the handle and disappeared right here because right here it wouldn't be shadowed. This light would be hitting that. But I will go along the cup's edge just a touch right along here. And there we have a touch of shadowing. Now we are done. I will see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed our video and you'll join us next time for a new tutorial. I'm not sure what it's gonna be. I kind of fly by the seat of my pants with no real plan. When something sparks my interest or my painting passion, then I go with it. Um, 
On this one, I will note that in the tutorial, I started adding berry wine to the darker edges. Once I reviewed that, I didn't like it. So just if you want to go with the magenta with the baby pink, and I think I would have been much happier. Actually, I did come back in later and went back over it with just the magenta and the baby pink to pull down the starkness of that berry wine where it really made some hard edges that I didn't like. So I'm always learning. I'm always making mistakes. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. They're learning curves and you learn from your errors and hopefully you remember it because I, I didn't. But the more you paint, the more you retain. And it had been a while since I've been in here painting. So that being said, so I hope you'll join me next time.